For those of you invested in or looking to subscribe to the Brookmont Dividend Growth Portfolio on Echo Trade, we pulled in Thurman Kelly from Brookmont to give us an update on the portfolio. So Thurman, good to see you. How's it going? It's, it's going very well, Jeff. How are you doing? Just I'm, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. So I want to give a quick overview, quick review of the year of, of what you guys have seen in the market and some of the events that have impacted the portfolio. Specifically, we were talking how AI you know, really had a, a, a massive impact. It was it was kind of all in the, in the news with ChatGPT coming out. So talk about, you know, kind of what Brookmont saw and, and, and what the effects of AI had in your guys' portfolio. Uh, yeah, so we were a dividend growth manager, which tends to be more in the value side of the overall equity market. So our exposure to AI was mostly through Microsoft and some of the chip manufacturing companies that we had. AI is going to be an amazing thing. It's going to really drive productivity in the country. Uh, but it did really dominate all the news and all the stock performance in the first six months of the year with the Magnificent mm -hmm. 7 really accounting for 80% of the returns of the S&P 500 in that entire uh, six-month period. So yeah. seven companies accounting for 80% of the returns. Obviously, um, that's a large dispersion in terms of returns for their overall economy. And some of the names we had were like Microsoft in our portfolio, um, which you know, is a direct beneficiary of AI, but we see that really the cash flows from that, you know, increased productivity of AI, um, including in their Azure division, really coming down the road much kind of further further along than what the market probably priced in right now. So more long term benefit for companies like Microsoft, yeah. Yeah, so we were thinking, you know, maybe a, some of their key divisions would increase revenue, you know, an extra 2% than what we'd already forecasted, uh, which is a significant amount for a company that big. Yeah. But it wasn't enough for us to, you know, go all in on AI. And with that, you know, there's some other names that benefited like, uh, like Facebook uh, or Meta now, weirdly mm -hmm. enough, was considered a value stock for the first six months of the of the year because back in january of last year they got reconstituted as a value stock because of i think it was their pe ratio qualified them for the russell 1000 value so in our benchmark we actually had to go against uh facebook or meta in the value space despite them you know being largely a growth company so if you didn't have them on in your portfolio as a value manager that was automatically i think about 60 basis points of underperformance right there so yeah. luckily um the second half of this year so far the third quarter we've uh had a little bit more of a normalized market not being dominated solely by one story or one new technology coming out so mm -hmm. the third quarter wasn't a great quarter for a lot of investors but we did see the energy sector really lead the way i think it was up about six percent in the third quarter while all the other sectors were mostly down uh, a large part of that was opex decisions to really kind of scale back their production models um, and not produce as many barrels of oil per day, um, which obviously will have a large impact. But then also we have all this geopolitical uh, unrest and uncertainty in the market. And whenever that happens, oil tends to, you know, the price of oil tends to go up and these energy companies um, can produce a lot more cash flow, uh, which obviously gets priced into their stock price. Yeah. So talk about that kind of, you know, moving forward, you know, we had, you know, we had a really great, you know, first half of the year, you know, again, through, through July, and then, you know, kind of have come down a little bit of a correction since then. So what are you guys looking at? You mentioned energy, you know, you know, the war in Ukraine and the war in Israel, obviously now, you know, kind of really ramping up and that's going to have an effect on prices there. What is your guys' outlook and what kind of things are you guys doing within the portfolio to, to kind of address kind of some of the things that we're seeing um, on a macro perspective? Uh, yeah. So, for the portfolio standpoint, we've we've been a little bit overweight energy for a couple of years now, just because we feel that there's been a large amount of underinvestment in that space over the past mm -hmm. five years. So naturally, we think the price of oil is going to be a little bit higher than traditional periods. So we've been a little bit overweight energy. Uh, but with that being said, that's more of just our love for three great companies in the energy space than us taking a sector bet. That's not really what we do. But as a result of us loving three companies, we are overweight energy, which we do get that benefit whenever there's a sector movement like that. Um, and then coming in with uh, the economic numbers we're seeing is that we we see growth slowing for sure. Uh, yeah. We don't think necessarily there'll be a full blown recession. We think, you know, with the war and everything, there's going to be enough production maybe from that that could help 
bolster the economy just a little bit but mm -hmm. uh we do see growth probably going to zero um it might go a little bit negative but it's not going to be like a 2008 we don't think uh we definitely feel that we would we might go down to that zero um growth zero percent growth for a year um but we don't see nothing too crazy on the horizon in terms of that just because inflation's pretty sticky the fed's gonna have to stay pretty still and you know unless something breaks in the financial market or something like that we don't see anything drastically happen got it yeah so so you don't see numbers going negative but but definitely you know not a lot of growth over the next year but investors can take a look at the brookmont dividend growth portfolio and basically copy the portfolio from from the guys at brookmont like thurman into their own account with an echo trade thurman always good to talk to you appreciate you taking some time thanks jeff appreciate it